Hello and Assalamu Alaikum. The current situation has caused a lot of problems for all of us. So I thought of being of some help to the world and and, and specifically to uh, a help for the O-level students studying Pakistan history. History is boring, do you think so? But if you know a few basic skills, the subject would not only be interesting but it would become way much easier for all of you. So who am I and why should I be telling you all this? I had been a teacher of Pakistan studies in the past and here I am again trying to be of some help to all of you. So let's begin. Let's get into the specifics. Now look at this. I think this is your book. The History and Culture of Pakistan Study, Nigel Kelly. You must be well aware of it and your uh, past papers okay so let's dive right into it i'll go through the entire course with you so you don't have to worry and i'm not going to give you boring lectures it's going to be only mind mapping so that you can refer to that mind map when it's time to study and also do before exams when it's so difficult to read or you know go through you know lengthy uh, paragraphs and underline each thing so you take one topic at a time we'll make a mind map of it and we'll keep that mind map safe with us when it's time to study we'll refer to it we'll get you know drill it into our brains and at the time of exams just execute it okay so let's begin with i thought of beginning with the uh, religious thinkers okay so this is the uh, first topic that i'll be dealing with and we'll go one by one so first we'll discuss shah Waliullah. now these rel- religious thinkers are very very important uh, in terms of scoring marks because you know it's not very difficult just a few things that you have to grasp okay and then you can just go about it okay and uh, mcqs do come from these things uh, from from you know uh, these religious thinkers so you have to be very careful um, not to miss out the details and here mind maps will again help you a lot so let's get into it okay so this is the mind map that i have already made for all of you I hope it's clear and you can see the whole thing and I'll discuss it with you when I begin and you can take a snapshot if you want and keep it with you or you can make your own as much as possible you can you know uh, um, make it as uh, beautiful as possible uh, using markers or you know uh, uh, there is the unlimited number of things that you can use and you know make things uh, beautiful for you yourself okay so uh, now Shah Waliullah we are beginning with Shah Waliullah his date of birth is extremely extremely important because this can come as an MCQ 21st of February 1703 now his real name was Qutbuddin this is his family tree this area you know in purple that I have mentioned it's all about his family tree so you just have to li- look at it you know two or three times and then you will be able to easily memorize it who was his father Shah Abdur Rahim and his father started a madrasa. Madrasa's name was Madrasa Rahimiya. Okay. And after his father's death, Shah Waliullah started teaching at the same madrasa. Shah Waliullah um, was born during the reign of Aurangzeb Alamgir. So I drew, you know, a crown. Uh, so it's helpful you know, to learn and it's easier also. Okay. Then he had two sons, Shah Rafi and Shah Abdul Qadir. So, you know, you, this is his family tree and that's done. Now here. His teacher, Sheikh Abu Tahir bin Ibrahim. You can learn the name. Uh, that can also be helpful. And then there are three things that you have to focus on. Beliefs. You have to focus on work. And you have to focus on importance. Beginning with belief systems. or no, Not belief systems, sorry. His beliefs. What were his beliefs? He believed that the decline of the Mughal Empire or the you know uh, decrease in their strength was basically because of the lack of education of the muslims and this lack of education was not only in quran it was also their moral and spiritual um, you know uh, uh, subservience to you know other ideologies that were um, uh, prevalent at that time okay so they had and the muslims were divided secondly the muslims were divided thirdly Un-Islamic principles were also prevalent during that time. So these were his beliefs. Three things that you have to keep in mind. One, the Muslims' lack of knowledge. The Muslims were divided. And un-Islamic principles were prevalent. And all these, in one way or the other, were leading to the decline of the Mughal Empire. 
Now, what was his work? So, in order to get rid of all of these problems, these are actually problems. So, what was his work? What did he do? He was a scholar and he had deep understanding of the Quran, four things. Because the Quran, Hadith, Fiqh, Ah and Tasawwuf. I can go into detail of all of this but I don't want to because I don't want to make this uh, video lengthy. Secondly, I don't want to make it boring. Okay, so second, translation of the Quran. This is the most, most important thing that he had done. So you can make a star over here like this. Okay. Translation of the Quran. He translated the Arabic text into Persian. Although he received a lot of opposition, but later on, you know, it proved to be a very good um, uh, uh, work from his side. And then later on, his sons also translated the Quran into Urdu. And it became widespread. A lot of people, masses started to read it and understand the Quran. Then the books, these are also very important. You have to, you know, by heart their names. Um, Hujatul Balagha and Izalat Akhwa, the two books that he had written. And then what else did he do? He organized a strong opposition against the Marathas um, who were trying to invade from the south. He also, you know, tried uh, to convince Ahmad Shah Abdali, who was a Persian ruler, to come and intervene and, you know, help um, the Muslims get united and fight against the Marathas. And finally, a battle was fought. Uh, this is also very important, which happened during his time. So, a battle of Panipat was fought in 1761 and uh, the Muslims were successful in this battle and they were able to defeat the Marathas. So, these five things important if you keep them in mind you know what work he had done he was a scholar he translated the Quran he had written two books two important books then an opposition against the Marathas which culminated into a battle that was fought in 1761 and resulted in the victory of the Muslims so the importance importance is actually summarizing all that you have learned okay so far so he was the one, he was this scholar, you know, was responsible in what? Highlighting the causes of the decline. And what did he highlight? That actually the weakness was within the Muslims themselves. You know, they were weak as a community, in their knowledge, in their spiritual and moral uh, values. So these were the reasons that they were um, uh, being subjugated. Now, another important contribution. Madrasa Rahimiya, which was a very very important platform. His father used it, later on he himself used it for what? Regenerating the Muslims, their moral and their spiritual strength. And then Quran, Quran obviously you cannot ignore it, it was a very very important contribution. He translated it and it became understandable to the masses. And then sectarian division which he highlighted which he thought was responsible for their decline, he tried to bring the Muslims together. He tried to stop the sectarian division, okay, by uniting them as much as possible. So this is it, okay. It's so very simple. We have covered one main topic of Shah Valiullah. His date of birth, his father, his two sons, his teacher, his main, his name, okay, uh, at, uh, you know, during uh, whose reign uh, he was born and his beliefs and his work and the importance of his work. I hope this uh, video was helpful for all of you and please keep, in wa keep watching, uh, you know, my videos and I'll be making further uh, more videos on, uh, you know, each and every topic and we'll cover the whole uh, course in this way. So it will be extremely easier for you to study. Thank you so much.